Today, we're talking about creating healthy workplaces to prevent burnout for leaders. And I'm so excited for this episode as today's guest is an amazing woman who I've worked very closely with over a number of years and seen her transition from a, a, a well, a history of leadership roles in the corporate environment to starting her own consulting business. And now she's running programs in her local community with councils and organizations, and she's making an incredible impact with the work that she does. Now, Donna Adams is a leadership coach. She's a workshop facilitator and a behavior change expert and the director and founder of Donna Adams Consulting, the Southern Leader Circle and Business Leaders Circle. Now, Donna and her circle-based approach are changing people and organizations one circle at a time. And I can't wait to hear more about this. And we're going to right in a moment. Donna's an internationally accredited NLP master practitioner, trainer, and coach, and she holds a Bachelor of Business and Bachelor of Commerce and Accounting. So welcome to the coaching circle, Donna Adams. Thank you, Tony. What an introduction. That was amazing. Well done. I'm so excited to be here. Yes, you are quite an impressive woman, Donna. And I'm so excited to have you on because I know, you know, having known you, like I said, for quite a few years, it's like every year I've discovered more and more about just the incredible person that you are and, you know, the impact that you've made across the world in actual fact not just your local community and um and I'm and I'm really keen to get into all that but where I just love to start with people is you know what led you to start your business and why is what you do important to you yeah well Tony I um I didn't have coaching in my sights or doing workshops and I was working in leadership roles um, managing teams through change and I had young children I was juggling the work-life balance and then all of a sudden I just started not enjoying anything I had everything to enjoy but I just found work really stressful and home life was great but I just wasn't getting that joy out of it and and so I just started exploring well what's happening for me and uh, I found out that I was burnt out so I was just so burnt out I had nothing more to give and just I, I felt like I was really flatlining I just yeah no enjoyment whatsoever so I needed to do something and so I started just exploring who I was and what I wanted to contribute uh, in the workplace and my family life and that's when I discovered NLP and coaching and actually discovered your training. So um, that was, I actually did the training for my own benefit and to connect into getting more joy and fulfillment for myself. But what I found was the power of the mind was so fascinating for me and so I kept on learning more and more and more. <laughs> and then I decided that, yeah, I wanted to start my own consulting business. And really, like, I just knew so many leaders doing such important work, but they were getting burnt out and they were leaving their industries like disability and aged care. And they just weren't able to... Um, pursue their passions because they had to to leave it just for their own well-being so so that's what I'm really passionate about and that's why I started my business to really help leaders to make an impact in their communities but without that burnout and having to sacrifice their life and their happiness um so yeah that's where it all began yeah I uh, look Donna and I think you know so many people can you know, probably relate to this, who have been in that situation where, you know, it looks like everything should be great, right? Yeah. Like you've got a great paying job, you've got the family, you've got, you know, all the lifestyle things there, but you're just like, like, what's wrong with me, right? Why, why am I not enjoying this? Like, why am I feeling so tired and 
stressed and you know whatever else goes along with that yeah and you start to get really mad at yourself as well because you know you've got no reason to complain but deep inside you um just things don't feel right yeah Mm, yeah yeah and so you know for you Donna could you identify like now in hindsight right obviously looking back now with what you know now can you identify what were the key things that you know really attributed to your burnout yeah it was uh often and for me especially it was my expectations uh I had huge expectations on myself I had gone from full-time um running corporate teams as a general manager to then having young kids and into project management work in a part-time capacity but I still wanted to have that impact of a full-time employee a full-time leader but then I was going home and um, raising two young girls with my husband doing all the things that um, need to be done at home as well so I was just trying to basically work twice as hard (laughs) to try and keep up with work me and personal life me. And uh, so I I just felt like I was being stretched way too thin. And I, I started to feel really tired all the time. I started to get really irritable. I started to get frustrated with myself. And I just wasn't getting the joy out of any area of my life. And even though I was getting promotions and I've got great family and friends and a great lifestyle, uh, none of it was really doing it for me. So um, so that was a real telltale sign mm. that something needed to change. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, what do you think, what do you think is because I'm really interested in this Donna like thinking about this from a perspective now uh in you know what happens with organizations and especially for leaders like what do you think and and not from a finger pointing perspective but what do you think was missing from your work environment do you know what I mean like like where was what was missing you know or guidance or support or structure that was was what you needed at that time that could have avoided burnout yeah well um I guess at the time and like I was in leadership roles for 20 years so in that time um the healthy workplace um was mainly focused on your physical um environment so like your desk set up and the ergonomics and uh, there was all the the safe work signs around, don't do this, don't do that. But it wasn't on monitoring your own wellness and how you were traveling. What was your stress levels like? How to manage your stress levels? And also in terms of how to support others um, around you to support them in regulating their own stress levels as well so um yeah so there wasn't the the information there wasn't um it wasn't talked about much mental health wasn't really mentioned whereas today there's a lot more opportunities for discussion for really um great practical tools and strategies in workplaces to support um, healthy workplaces and healthy leaders so that they recognize the signs of burnout before they get to that really strong impact where it's affecting them physically and mentally and relationships and their career and productivity yeah yeah that I mean that's such a good point because yeah, it's been a while since I was in in a, a corporate kind of environment but that's definitely the stuff that I can remember it all be about are you sitting correctly have you got everything within a right reach zone on your desk and and everything like that but it wasn't really addressing anything else that was you know really what causes stress and I think the other thing that you mentioned there Donna that I think is really important and I and I think you know you see this in a lot of people who are um you know leaders who like tend to put others first right Mm -hmm. people who want to put others needs before their own and and 
you know, I see this in a lot of the business owners that I work with as well. So I, I've got to, you know, I always put others' needs before my own. Um, sometimes do you find like, because you, you mentioned about how do you deal with other people's stress? So like your teams or your staff's stress, how do you deal with that? Because that seeing people that you're responsible for under stress or in an unresourceful state can be very stressful to deal with, right? Yes, so stressful. And um, often, especially if we're the business owner or the manager, we do take it on uh, ourselves and we are trying to fix and navigate and potentially take on more workload to support the team. And that can work for the short term, but when it's a long-term approach, it, it's going to catch up on you and going to have an impact on your well-being. And that's why in terms of leadership, it's so important to really understand how you lead and how you can support yourself so that you can support others. It's like that uh, analogy with the put your own oxygen mask on when when you're in a plane because then you can help others. Whereas if you forget about yourself, you're going to be no use to your team and your organisation. So it's mm. really important. And now um, with legislation that's passed in December, the psychosocial aspect of managing those hazards, which means that interrelationship between um, your staff's mental health, their relationships and the workplace and monitoring that workplace stress. So now employers have a responsibility to manage workplace stress and what's acceptable levels. So workplaces will have stressful times, but what's reasonable? And so in be being proactive in that space is not only a great thing for your staff and your business, but it also meets the legislation. And it's been shown that um, by having a healthy workplace, uh, whether you work for yourself or uh, work for others, increases your produ productivity by three times. So mm. like you can really gain a lot of benefits um, through managing your own well-being and stress and um, supporting others to do the same. Yeah, that's really, that is such a really important thing. And and thanks for sharing that about the legislation, because I think, you know, I don't know if if everyone becomes aware of that, but I think like the important thing there, Donna, like you were saying, is like, yes, there's going to be different times when there is different amounts of stress in an organization or, or within a certain team or you know roles um but i think the important thing is not to just go oh well that's just how it is sometimes it's like yes acknowledging that there's sometimes more stress but also making sure that there's support in place for people to be able to navigate those times right yeah definitely and also making sure that um the workplace is set up so that uh, it's nearly like you've got a um, a bucket of energy so that you can work through those stressful times and come out the other end um, not broken and burnt out. And so having those tools and strategies in place is, is really important and being proactive. And so we often know that different seasons are busier for businesses or maybe there's been significant change or restructure and those are the times that then we need to get um, some well-being sessions in the workplaces you need to get practical stress management sessions so people can actually gain the tools that they can use in their business and even accessing um, like employee assistance programs or coaches so that they can work through and fast track um, their way through the stresses and being able to make decisions and problem solve. And also um, really very proactive in our own well-being because that is key because we all handle stress differently. Some of us can handle huge amounts of stress and just keep working through, whereas others um, can hear the word change and all of a sudden it puts them in a spiral so 
Yeah, yeah. And that's that's the key thing is it? it's just recognizing that everyone's individual and how they deal with these kinds of situations. And, you know, I it was interesting, Don, actually, that you mentioned, you know, like people having the EAPs in uh in place, right? So the employment assistant programs. Yeah. Um, and you know, I'm interested in your thoughts about this because I know, for example, um, you know, I've heard some varied I guess feedback about some of the traditional ways that these programs have been set up and I know you know that there's like for example like I work with some fairly fast growing businesses and they tend to you know I guess move away from some of the the traditional ways of managing people and staff and support and that's where I often get called in you know in, in coaching because it is more direct and it's faster kind of shift and helping people change. So like what's your experience been in, in that space? Yeah, employee assistance programs um, definitely have a role to play and I've actually accessed them in the past. I guess their limitations um, are sometimes they can be a bit of a tick box approach in terms of it's part of our obligation as an organisation to offer uh, employees support. And so it can be more that, yet yeah, we've done that. But often they don't get access very often. And also a lot of the EAPs are um, through online um, or phone services. And you're not actually dealing with the same person regularly. So they don't get to know you um, often um, and they don't get to understand um, your scenario and the complexity and also build up that rapport with you so that you feel confident enough to share whatever those big, heavy um, experiences or change that you're going through um, so that you can actually be helped and given tools and strategies. And quite often EAPs can be a um, it's <laughs> a bit of a talk fest really in terms of uh, just downloading your problems. Mm. And so in terms of getting employees to work through and get out the other side and productive again you want it to be real strategy and results focused and so it's giving them the tools to work through really quickly what's going on um, the tools to be able to support the change and even changing perspectives and strategies and then coming out the other side um, more connected to their workplace, more productive and also happier overall. So, um, yeah, mm. so, so EAPs have a place to play, but sometimes that more personalised, um, really getting like a coach can really get to know the workplace, the staff and understand the problems and the stresses and the change that is people are going through and really fast track um, the support. Yeah, I think that's a really good point, Donna. Because like you said, like, you know, any any form of support is better than right. none, right? It's great. And, and that's a really good thing. And I think, though, like, you know, you're right on the money there about having the difference between, you know, that maybe one-off phone call or talking to different people and having someone who's really invested in that business and what's going on there as a whole um, and someone who's outside of that business as well. You know, I think they're two really, really, you know, unique and powerful, you know, uh, I guess, elements to really help people create change and and um, uh, and especially in that workplace. So, so yeah. on that, Donna, I'd love for you to share a little bit about how it is that you do help people and like what are your sort of strategies and, and even are there any sort of you know tips that you could share yeah and I guess the other thing with the APs people tend to access them when it's hit crisis point 
Mm. Um, so the support I offer, um, I work with organisations and create leadership circles and workshops that really focus on um, getting to know the workplace, um, the staff, the relationships amongst the team, but is really supporting them through leadership skills, mindset, which is so important, and also in terms of well-being. And with the leadership circles, it's usually a small team environment. Uh, it's goals focused, so in terms of personal as well as business goals. And it's working together um, over a six month period where people go through massive growth, massive change, and really create strong connections and support ongoing um, through learning new skills and strategies, but also working through and sharing um, problem solving and techniques to, to really come up with some great solutions to some of the big challenges that uh, individuals and workplaces face. So, mm, yeah. Um, yeah, and also in terms of um, private coaching as well for workplaces. So that's where um, workplaces can be really proactive and they can target those high performers in their workplace who um, they reward them with coaching support so that they can really enhance their career and take the next level. But also coaching support can also be given to those staff who may be facing um, challenges and maybe their performance has dropped off. But they're such a great employee that the workplace is invested in supporting them through whatever challenges and helping them um, come out the other end so that um, they're productive and committed and and happy. So, Yeah, and I think that's so important. And there's two things out of what you were just saying there, Donna, that I'd love for you to expand on. And, and um, the, the first one was about, you know, having personal and professional goals at work. And then the second one was about, you know, you, you just mentioned that, and I'm just going to say both these now because otherwise I forget. The second <laughs> one was about um, you were saying about, you know, when employees may be going through some challenges and they need some extra, you know, assistance. So remind me of that one. We'll come back. But the first one with the personal goals and the professional goals, why do you think that that's important in the workplace that people also uh, have a focus on their personal goals? Yeah, well, it's funny because like old school uh, workplaces, we used to think there was like workplace me <laughs> and personal me. And as soon as you worked into the, the office, <laughs> personal you would just wait outside for the day. Yeah, but that's not the case. And in terms of setting personal and workplace goals, it's really important because People want more than just a job that pays them money. They want to be fulfilled. They want to live their purpose. And for a workplace to actually recognise personal goals as well as business goals and support the achievement of those helps also connect people's personal goals to the business goals, which then increases productivity and um, that connection and um, really looks at the values of why people are motivated and how you can motivate them in terms of their commitment to the organisation, but also making sure that they're fulfilled in their jobs and so they want to stay in the organisations. Mm -hmm. So it's all intertwined. And, of course, if you can um, combine the power of both, uh, that's where the real magic happens for organisations. Um, and also their employees. Yeah, and I think, you know, that's such a good point because, yeah, I, you know, I know even the businesses that I work in, the, the problems that I help people with, they're always personal problems, right? Mm -hmm. People bring their person into the workplace. That's that's who you are. That's what you're doing. So I think, you know, that's such a good thing. And, and what you just said then actually ties into the part two that I was talking about when people are going through challenges. And it, and it comes back, it's both ways. It comes back to... You know, how do we keep 
people in a job that's that's serving everybody because people do go through challenges right it's a bit like I was just thinking then it's a bit like a relationship Mm. you know you have challenges in relationship and any long-term relationship will have challenges but if you go well that's it you're not performing (laughs) see you later which by the way I had a history of doing (laughs) in my past um (laughs) You just go through having these same kind of issues, right? So, so ultimately, it's it's you're sort of looking at it. Well, it's better for everyone if every if if people were supported through whatever challenge they have, whether it's personal or professional. Do you think that that does create more like loyalty and trust and um and you like you said ultimately productivity within the business increases, right? Yeah, a hundred percent. Like, if you know that your workplace actually cares and like really cares in terms of getting to know and understand what drives you, what motivates you, and is really focused on um, providing, helping you provide that link, but also in terms of workplaces they change all the time. Um, Our lives change all the time. So there's going to be hiccups that pop up. So um, whether it's a big restructure at work and then that triggers everyone like, oh, we've already gone through restructures and it was horrible. It was a bad experience. And, And so it's really being proactive in the workplace and connecting people's why why do they want to work for this organization why are they here why are they on um this planet basically what Mm. what really um lights them up and really helping them see their role in the bigger picture because we do we all want to have an impact we all want to make a difference we all want to contribute but sometimes we get lost in the stories of the past and people like often say, oh, we've always done it this way. So let's just keep doing it this way. And so it's catching people in their stories and helping them to um, think differently mm. and also see the opportunities and recognize their own blind spots because we often don't. And, and that's why having coaches involved really helps people become aware of um, maybe what they're needing or what they're lacking and supporting them through that. Um, and even with the personal challenges, like life can be all crazy and we're like so focused on our job and our career and we're just smashing things out, getting promotions. But then all of a sudden maybe we're having to, we're being kicked out of our house because someone's selling it on us or our relationships break down or or maybe we do have young children and um, we're exhausted. Yeah, or and, there's sickness or something yeah. else, other issues that happen. Yeah, yeah. and in terms of like the commitment um, with like when you know each other as people, even like the people that you work with, you're more willing to jump in and help them when they're struggling. Whereas if we just see each other as a job role, um, yeah, we're not as attached to that. There's no emotion in that. And so it's really important for people to feel valued and connected in the workplace because you're going to get greater commitment. People are going to want to be part of the organisation, not just now, but for long term. Yeah, and it's it's so interesting because while you're talking about this, Donna, I'm going, oh my God, it's so much like being in a relationship. You know, you can have like negative anchors, you can have you can, <laughs> you can have misaligned values, you can have unfulfilled strategies, and you know, this is all a bit NLP talk. Oh, and but, expectations. Oh yeah, expectations. Goodness. So, yeah. but and so the thing that I guess what just popped in my mind then is because obviously, if you have a if you're ever in a relationship with someone, you've generally chosen someone that you like but what about in workplaces where you know you're spending eight hours a day maybe more in an environment with someone that you didn't necessarily choose to be in the environment with they just come along with the role um 
like what do you what do you see around that kind of space Donna when you have just people who just have like clashing personalities or yeah yeah. it's so common because you don't get to choose who you work with and it's a real um even when you look at the roles of a company it's so different in terms of the skills but in terms of how we all think it's so different some of us are really big picture and some of us need all the detail and the specifics and so um, as a leader it's really important and like I do a lot of work with leaders in this space to really understand how they think but also when they understand how their brain works they can also see and connect to all right well this stuff actually needs this support um, or this staff actually needs a lot of change. So they need a lot of um, opportunity and um, new things to do. And so just connecting and understanding where people are coming from, what they are needing to succeed, and also what they're needing to be fulfilled. But you are always going to come across those people who just press your buttons. And um... perception is projection, right? <laughs> you know, it's so funny when you talk about that need for change. That was me when I worked in a in a role in an office. I needed to change things <laughs> up every like 12 to months to two years. I would be like <laughs> shuffling around the whole accounts department. The other people didn't like change. <laughs> <laughs> My poor... My poor, um, the the FC at the time, oh God, he must have had a challenge. He, he needed some leadership coaching at that time, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and it's so funny because I was the same. I needed change every three years was my number. Mm. But then I worked in a workplace in the disability sector that was going through big changes all the time. So I ended up staying there for 13 years, which was like a massive record, but I was getting that change need met. Yeah. The the workplace was changing so quickly. So yeah, so we're all different. But in terms of like, and also in workplaces, we have to have those difficult conversations Mm. uh, because we do... um, we're all contributing to a common purpose and some people can make that achievement of that result really frustrating and slow down the process. So really um, having those communication skills, knowing how to get into rapport with people, knowing what motivates people through their values, knowing what beliefs people are holding in terms of a lot of Um, leaders I work with have imposter syndrome so even on the outside they they look all amazing but on the inside they're highly stressed because they don't feel like they're worthy and they don't feel like they know enough and Mm. so it's really um, getting a bit deeper into understanding how your staff tick because then you'll be able to support them whereas often we make judgments of oh that person's not contributing because they're just lazy and it may be that they're actually really lacking confidence and um, they're needing some extra support, some extra steps to help get them where you need them to be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Donna, I could keep asking you all kinds of questions in this space because I think, you know, leadership is one of those things that um, if you are stepping into that you know, into some kind of a leadership role, there can be all kinds of challenges that do pop up. And and it's exactly why people, you know, need you on their side, Donna. <laughs> um, but like, I, I would love to know, right, we've, we've talked a bit about the things that you do and, and how, you know, the incredible work that you do supporting teams and, and leaders. Um, but I bring it back to a bit about your business, because I know a lot of people that listen to this podcast have their own business and you know often when you're starting your own business or you're going in your own business and you see everybody else what they're doing in their business and you think oh my god everyone's got to work out apart from me yeah Um, you know what do you think has been one of the most challenging things for you in business and how have you dealt with it 
Uh, to be honest, the uh, the most challenging is getting out of my own way. Because um, <laughs> stepping up into your own business is, is big. Uh, it's so different to what I had ever done before. Because before I was an employee, I was a manager, I was getting paid regularly. I, I didn't have to ask for money. Um, I didn't have to be sales and marketing. And so in terms of going into my own business, my biggest challenge was also believing in myself because even though I had all these skills, as an employee, it felt different to me than as my own business. Mm. And I think when people start up their own business, it's quite a vulnerable process that we go through. And it really brings out into the light any of the insecurities that we had and that we could just work through in the business world or, or our um, workplace. And so for me, and, and I find myself now working um, with a business leaders circle that I run, and these are small business uh, owners, and I can see a lot of the struggles that that I used to go through, that um, that money mindset, our relationship with money, and our stories that we hold around what's possible for us, and the limits that we often place on ourselves. And so, yeah, the hardest thing for me was, yeah, just. Um, building that belief and really stepping up as a leader in my business um, and as a business owner and really changing my identity and being the person that I needed to be to be a successful business owner and doing the things like you've got to put yourself in unfamiliar um places and do unfamiliar things and so it can feel like everything's all new and sometimes it can feel quite hard but really pushing through that and and doing the inner work like working with Tony has been amazing to help me uh, discover me as a business owner and really get rid of the noise um, that was blocking my success. So um, definitely working with the coach is a great way to fast track that. Otherwise, yeah, I could see myself um, struggling with some of those things for a long time and not moving through it. So, and I'm impatient. I want it to move through. Get something <laughs> done now. It's really quick. I want it now. Yeah. And, and Donna, you know, that's really interesting. And thank you for sharing that because, you know, you've got a bachelor in business and, and in commerce, accounting, you've done all this leadership for 20 years. You know, you've held some, you know, really, you know, like big roles in your time. Um, and but it's so interesting to to note that when you go into business, because I had the exact same thing. I hadn't come from um, management kind of roles, mind you, but stepping into business is such a different environment. And mm -hmm. um, and it is where you need to bring in all of those those kinds of skills that you've got and, and like just, you know, pump it up big time to kind of shift because it's a huge identity shift, isn't it? It's massive and yeah, I nearly felt like I was like an apprentice or a trainee again when I first, even though I had all this experience and all the skills and all the qualifications, but it just felt different me representing me instead of me representing an organisation. Yeah. And so it was a massive identity shift and um, you saw my frustration <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I was going through that but then yeah you keep growing and you keep evolving and yeah you, you take the action you get the results and and then you're even more pumped <laughs> to do more and have a bigger impact and and also whatever you're doing people need it um there's so many people who need support and especially in workplaces and even personally like people are facing a lot of challenges and so yeah. 
being able to connect with great people who know their stuff but also are, are relatable um, is really important. Well, which is exactly what you are, Donna, in sharing that story because, you know, and I think that's the thing is is when you're helping people move through their own challenges, it definitely helps if you regularly challenge yourself, right? And you know what that's like to put yourself way out of your comfort zone and and essentially develop the new neurology for that new environment or that new role or, or whatever it is that you want to do. I think it, it gives you loads of empathy as well, doesn't it, for people and where they're at. But also I think like it gives you that that certainty that it's okay to push people through because you know what it's like to get through and come out the other end, like you were saying, when you're suddenly like, oh, my God, yes, I made it out the other side. Yeah. And it's so but, worth it. Yeah. And like for me, being burnt out in corporate, like for my first couple of years in business, I did not want anything to do with corporate. So I was just doing private coaching clients. And it was only in the last year or so that I thought, all right, I need to step up because corporate really needs this type of support because there's so much pressure in the corporate world. And it was only when I put myself out there and um, applied for a grant with a McLaren Vale Business and Tourism Association through Wellbeing SA and um, Business SA, that it really took my um, impact and exposure and also um, just my excitement for, oh, I can do more and I can help more people and and so now, like the McLaren Vale business community, all the small businesses are now getting access to coaching and workshops to support them as business owners and business leaders so that their businesses can be successful. They live um, healthy lives, but also it impacts the community as well. So that ripple effect is really exciting so it just shows that yeah you you've got to trust yourself and and it's okay when it feels a bit scary (laughs) get the support back yourself and um yeah you'll get there and I think that it's just such a testament to you just leveling up your mindset right because from going from like when you first started your business could you have seen yourself applying for grants and getting grants and working with, you know, like business SA and wellbeing SA and, you know, the councils and things like that. Yeah. Like don't no. shake your head. Yeah. No way. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I could not foresee that. And I think that was one of the blockers um, early on in my business, at, like when I started my business, because I wanted to know the path. I, I wanted I thought there was a right path that I had to take. And yeah, can someone give me the step by step procedure of how to do business, please? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And just tell me that, yeah, this is at the other end and these are the steps, please. Um, but it doesn't happen like that. And and you know, the grant came up through one conversation um through council, and that didn't go anywhere initially, but then uh, a couple of weeks later, they contacted me about this um, state government grant um, that came up. So it it's just like taking the action, knowing what direction and who you want to help, because then the path will start to show itself and yeah. you will gain your confidence in taking those steps along the path. And sometimes the path does take detours. And uh, yes, and yeah. a lot of those are good. Some of them can be challenging, but you're always going to learn something, and um, and you're usually going to have a laugh afterwards. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's the thing. It's a, you've got to be able to go. I, I I know there's going to be a point in time where everything's going to be okay, and in fact, it'll be a really funny story. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a great uh, share that I can. Yeah. 
share yeah. my experiences. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Well, Jonna, I feel like we could just keep talking because you are such a wealth of information. And I know we haven't even spoke about, you know, the half the stuff that you've done in the community and the other things that you've done, which is really amazing. But um, I will definitely pop all of your links and things um, into. Now, you've got a free um download haven't you for the healthy workers workplace assessment is that right yeah so whether you um are just you in your business or whether you've got a load of staff um and a big business it's a great really important assessment to do because we often aren't aware where we're at in terms of our workplace health and when we can check in and get the feedback of where we're at, it will just help you come up with strategies and um, connect in with someone like me who can help your workplace and really build that resilience um, and healthy workplace infrastructure so that um, teams just want to stay working for you and productivity just goes through the roof, which is exciting. Yeah, I love that. So I'll put the links to that in the show notes. So definitely go and check that out. And um, all Donna's contact details will be there as well. Um, And Donna, the final question that I just love to ask people, because especially people in business, I don't know what it's like. We can get a bit caught up in business. Um, What do you do for fun, Donna? Oh, I do like fun. So um, (laughs) Uh, so on the weekend uh, for fun, uh, we went to the river uh, with the family. So quite often we go skiing and wakeboarding on the river. Uh, I've only just, I've been wakeboarding for a while, but I'd never mastered the kneeboard. <laughs> and um, my eight-year-old taught me how to do it. <laughs> on the weekend so I'm now a kneeboarder as well as a wakeboarder <laughs> uh, I, I never got into the kneeboarding it oh. always kind of freaked me out there must be something in the like the lean or the, like the something that makes all the difference oh I just found like trying to pull yourself up <laughs> it was definitely used muscles that I hadn't used for a while <laughs> yeah good job <laughs> Good job. I did see some pictures up. It looked like you were having a great time. So that's that's awesome, Donna. Well, Donna Adams, thank you so much for being uh, my guest on the Coaching Circle. I've loved all of your insights and uh, really appreciate your time. Thanks for having me, Tony. Um, it's, yeah, my pleasure and I've loved listening to your podcast. So thanks for having me on. Oh.